Okay, here we're going to be looking at least residual values, and we're going to look at a guaranteed residual value versus an unguaranteed residual value. And we're going to be looking at it from the leasee's perspective here, that's the company that's leasing the equipment and using the equipment. And we're going to start out here with a guaranteed residual value. And what we're going to look at is how it fits into our amortization schedule here for this lease. So first for our amortization schedule, we have the lease payments here, and then we have the expenses here. Those would be executory costs, the maintenance costs and so forth here, taxes, and then we have the financing cost, that was the interest the expense in this case here, and then we have the principal reduction amount here, the reduction of the lease liability here. And we first we'll start out looking at this minimum lease payment. So we have a payment here of $22,250, and then we have our executive costs here of $2,000. So. Uh, to determine our minimum lease payment, we have to uh, subtract out these executory costs here from the uh, lease payment of 22250 So subtracting the 2000 uh, uh, executory costs here from the lease payment on 22250 we come up with our minimum lease payment here of $20,250 here. And then for example here we have a five-year lease when we have those $22,250 payments. And then we get down to this residual value here. And in this case, it's a guaranteed residual value here of $4,500. So what is this residual value here? So that is the estimated fair value of the leased asset at the end of the lease term. Now that's an additional lease payment that the leasee will pay at the end of the lease term, and it's a lease liability here of $4,500. But this $4,500 has both an interest component and a principal reduction component here. And the lease, um, this re guaranteed residual value, that would be uh, recognized at the end of the lease or at the end of the fifth year, but our payments are at the beginning of the year, so we have to discount this $4,500 back to its present value at the beginning of the fifth year here. So uh, again, using a 9.5% discount right here, we discount that back. Its present value is $4,109. Subtracting the $4,109 from the $4,500 payment gives us the interest component here of $391. So the next thing we have to do is we have to determine the capitalized amount here on this lease here. So uh, how we do that here is we take the present value of those minimum lease payments here of $20,250. We discount those back for five years at 9.5% in this case. And their present value here is $85,140. Now we have to include in this capital or in this capital amount here for this lease, uh, lease pay, uh, capital amount for the lease here is we have to include this guaranteed residual value here of $4,500. So what we would do is we would discount that back here at five years, 9.5%. That gives its present value here at $2,858. That's that guaranteed residual value. So summing the uh, present value of the um, minimum lease payments here of 85140 plus this residual value of 2858 their present value gives us the capitalized amount here of $88,000 for the lease. So what we would do here to amortize this lease, we would take the uh, minimum lease payment amount here of 20250 and subtract it from the $88,000 capital amount and then we come up with the our new balance here of $67,750. Take that times nine and a half percent for a yearly interest rate that gives us an interest um, component here of sixty four hundred and thirty six dollars so subtracting the sixty four hundred and thirty six dollars uh, from the principal or that minimum lease payment here of twenty thousand two hundred and fifty gives us a principal amount here of thirteen thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollars so what we have to note here is this interest component plus this principal reduction component always equals the minimum lease payment here of $20,250. So uh, we come back to our next uh, amount here, our balance, that would be the $13,814 from the $67,750, gives us $53,936, and then that interest component would be $5,124. But to determine the principal amount, we again we go back to this minimum lease payment of $20,250 and subtract this $5,424 from it. That gives us the next principal reduction here of $1,526. So we just continue on down here amortizing it in that fashion.
So the next thing we have to note here is that uh, we have to look at how this lease was recorded here. It was recorded as a capital asset here, and that would have been debited here for $88,000. That was the capitalized amount here of the lease. And then we recognized accumulated depreciation here on this on this lease, on this capital asset here for this lease. And this is again where this uh, guaranteed residual value comes into play here. So we take the $88,000 capitalized amount here and we have to subtract out that residual value here of $4,500 divided by the five-year lease life here gives us $16,700 worth of depreciation per year here. So we would sum our depreciate, accumulated depreciation here at $83,500, compare it to our capital amount here of $88,000. So our net amount here would be $4,500, and that's the uh, residual value here of the lease. Now the next thing we're going to look at here is this, this leasey, we record this leased asset and liability, the depreciation, the executory costs, the interest, and the lease payments based on this guaranteed residual value here. So those would have to be recorded here for the leasey on the balance sheet and on their income statement. But let's concentrate on this residual, this guaranteed residual value here of $4,500 and look at how we'd recognize any gain or loss here on this residual value. So let's look at, at the first case here as if at the end of the least re if at the end of the lease, the residual value, its fair value, the residual value here was $2,000. Now that's less than the $4,500 guaranteed residual value that is guaranteed here. So what we would do is we'd be rec recognizing a loss here. We have the $4,500 guaranteed amount less its fair value of $2,000 here gives us the difference here gives us a loss here in the capital lease that we'd record here for $2,500. Then we also have this interest uh, expense component on this residual value here of $391 from our um, amortization schedule here and also the lease liability component of $4,109. $4 That's a reduction here in our uh, lease liability here. And then we'd also rec uh, record uh, accumulated depreciation here that would be offset here at $83,500 and those would be debited amounts here and then we would recognize our, our lease equipment or our capital account here would be uh, credited for $88,000 and our cash account here would re be reduced here by $2,500. That's the loss that was uh, recognized here on this capital lease here. And then let's look at the case here. It is if at the end of the lease the residual value, its fair value here was $7,000, that means it's greater than the $4,500 um, guaranteed residual value. So in this case, we'd recognize a gain here. We take the $7,000 uh, fair value of this residual value here at this point and subtract out the $4,500 guaranteed residual value. So the difference here would be $2,500 gain that we'd recognize here. So we would uh, uh, credit or debit our cash account for $2,500. Again, our interest expense account here for $391. The release liability here of $4,109. And that's again for this residual value here. And then our accumulated depreciation that would be debited here for $83,500. And then the leased equipment account that would be credited here for $88,000. And then again, our gain here would be we'd recognize that here for $2,500. And then one last item here. When we're working with these amortization schedule to determine our total amounts here. All we do is sum our columns here for each of the years here. So we would determine we could determine our total payments, our total interest expense here, and, and our total ex executory expense, and then our interest expense and our principal amount here. So you can see our principal amount here was reduced by eighty-eight thousand dollars, and we started out with a balance here of eighty-eight thousand dollars, and it comes down to a zero amortization here at the end. And one other thing here. Here, this payment amount here, 115750 that would be the totals here of this expense, uh, executory expenses plus our interest expense here plus the principal amount here. So you can just add up all your amounts here, the, the uh, executory expenses plus the interest expense plus the principal reduction amount here should equal the total payment amount here.
Now let's look at how we'd handle an unguaranteed residual value here and again we'll be looking at it through this lease amortization schedule and we'll be looking at it from a, the leasees perspective here. So the first thing for our minimum lease payments those would be the same as that would, was calculated here with the guaranteed residual value. We just take the payment amount here 22250 less the executory expenses of 2000 per year gives us a minimum lease payment here of 20 thousand two hundred and fifty dollars per year. Now let's move down here and look at our residual value here. Now uh, you can see the forty five hundred dollars isn't included here and we have to assume that the residual value here of forty five hundred dollars is unguaranteed. That's the same as having no residual value. So it isn't the forty five hundred dollars that was guaranteed before is not included with an unguaranteed residual value here. And the next thing we have to look at is our capitalized amount here for this leased asset. Asset. And that's based on, the, again, the present value of those minimum lease payments here of $20,250 per year for five years at 9.5% discounted back. They're worth $85,140. Now, uh, because this residual value of $4,500 that we have is now unguaranteed, it isn't included here in the capitalized amount of this leased asset. So we start out with our capitalized amount here at $85,140. And then we have to recalculate our interest expense here and a reduction in principal again based on this new capitalized amount here of $85,140. And then the other thing here, uh, the lessee records the leased asset and the liabilities, depreciation, the executory costs, interest, and the lease payments based on the unguaranteed residual value. It would be based on this new amortization schedule here. And then the other thing here, at the we have we recorded our least capital a asset here uh, we debited it for $85,140 here. We record this capital asset and that's the capitalized amount of the lease here that we had to recalculate at $85,140. And then we have accumulated depreciation here and we calculate our depreciation here by taking the $85,140 capitalized amount divided by five years for the lease gives us $17,000. $28 here per year. So summing those for five years we get accumulated depreciation of $85,140 netted against the uh, asset capitalized amount here of uh, for the lease here at $85,140 here. So at the end of the lease term the lease liability is zero here. And assuming the leased asset is fully amortized and fully depreciated as we've shown here no entry is required at the end of the lease term except to remove the asset from the book. So there's no residual value included here and no calculations required here. So and then the other thing is uh, just to note here that uh, summing our amounts here for our total payments, our executory expenses here, our interest expense, and our principal amount here. Those are all recalculated here based on the um, new uh, uh, based on not including this residual value of $4,500 since it's unguaranteed.